Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town, and today I'm going to be redrawing the ugliest page of my comic that I've ever drawn. My top contenders were page 28, page 30, and page 56. Page 28 suffered from way too many bubbles and way too much text, and it also has some of the most boring backgrounds that I've ever done. Page 30 suffers from the same bad backgrounds, and it also has a really bad like object shot. Like I didn't try very hard on the chocolate bar, and I think it really makes the entire page struggle since that was kind of a key focus point of the page. But it's page 56 that I actually intend on fixing because it has a myriad of problems, and I'm going to talk about them as I start fixing them. So as I get started here, I want to mention that I don't typically encourage people to go back and fix old pages of their ongoing projects or comics, primarily because you'll get caught in a loop trying to catch your old stuff up to the quality of your new stuff, but then you'll be improving as you do that. So you'll catch yourself in this loop of constantly editing and fixing up old pages and you'll never be able to actually make progress. There's lots of like published professional comics that look a little more clunky at the start. That's usually just how it works. So don't stress about it too much. Um, this page was a special case and I'll show you why. So here are the two pages leading up to this page and you'll notice that they actually look considerably better than this one. That is because this page was intensely rushed. I was still in college um, when I was working on this page as well as having a job. And I believe I was also traveling home soon so this was one of the most rushed pages that you can find in the entire comic and as a result I apparently forgot the lighting of the room that she was in so it goes from this beautiful sort of like golden sunset -y kind of look to suddenly that lighting is just it's just vanished um, this bothers me tremendously the, those top two panels should absolutely match with the previous two pages lighting and they just don't. Like, I just forgot to do it. I also think that the middle panel where she's going down the stairs is one of the most ugly backgrounds that I've ever done. Like, it's so chunky, it's so rushed, and it just, the color palette makes me want to scream. That, like, macaroni and cheese color with the relatively saturated red color of the door, and then there's multiple different blue colors that also kind of blend in with her hair. It's just, it's, it's awful. So the big thing I want to fix in that middle panel is just trying to get it up to the standard of the shot that was in the page two pages prior. Um, just kind of that level of detail and just overall just making it look nicer. Um, I also wanted to obviously do little fixes like the proportions of Planchette's face and body are kind of off for the whole page. I would also say that the like posing and composition of this page is just not great in general, but I tried not to change too much of that. This is sort of an art restoration, so I didn't want to do anything crazy like completely change the composition of the panels. I felt like the flow was okay. I liked the fact that like the stepping down the stairs sort of leads into the next panels um, below, so that was all fine. The only panel in which I'd made any major changes to the like perspective um, was the fourth panel down. Um, I just felt like her being cornered into that painting didn't look right and I wanted to make a little change there. I uh, really tried to focus on making sure it looked like Planchette had a neck because her neck was just straight up missing through this entire uh, page originally and that bothers me a lot. Um, I also don't like when her mouth is so close to her eyes. Her nose and mouth seem to like migrate up when I was like rushed. I'm not sure why, but yeah, her face looked completely out of balance. And at first I thought maybe this is just the way I used to draw her when I was first starting out. But truthfully, again, comparing it to the pages that came right before it, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Uh, yeah, I must have been in a real state when I was making this page. Early on in the comic, I had a ton of continuity errors, and basically, for those of you who don't know, that just means an error in like a TV show or a comic or anything where like something changes, like a background element changes, or something a character was holding in their left hand is now being held in their right with no plausible reason as to why the character switched, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, my biggest continuity problem in Early Unfamiliar was that I never really properly designed her house. Um, her upper floor was pretty okay like I generally knew where everything was but her living room um, I because I had to start drawing it so early in the comic I positioned things in a way that wasn't really conducive to the story later on and it just wasn't very like 
visually appealing. Um, and that lack of planning at the start really caused trouble for me down the line until I decided to just make a few vital changes and then just stick to those. Um, so that is one of the things that I always recommend if you're going to start a comic make sure that you don't just have character designs and story stuff make sure you know exactly what the settings are going to look like because that is actually the most difficult thing to get nailed down at least for me um, i don't have great spatial reasoning so that might also be a reason why um, but basically i modeled this living room this version of her living room on a more um, up-to-date version around the time i was like midway through the series i really got it figured out really well i even designed it in a 3d modeling program because i was having so much trouble so just to figure out where everything was going to go um it really helped a lot so uh, i ended up just going for that because there were already so many versions of her living room in this early part of the comic i thought i might as well just make it the most accurate till later on um since i can't fix all of those pages and uh, i think it really does help um it's a lot better i had this solid banister just out of pure laziness originally because i didn't want to draw the rest of the room behind it um but it just looks so weird and ugly and out of place I mean, she's supposed to be in sort of like this tiny Victorian mansion kind of idea. Um, so this solid banister just really does not fit with that at all. I also put way more detail into the uh, painting of the bride, um, especially because she's really relevant in the current chapter. I wanted to give her a little more detail um, because, you know, when I first drew her, she was just a one shot gag. I didn't really know necessarily if she was going to have her own chapter. Uh, so yeah, that was a really important change I was able to make and it just gives it a lot more like character. I just feel like it was so sloppy in the original, it drives me crazy. Moving into the coloring phase, there was a lot to think about. First of all, I knew I didn't like the color palette of the page as it was, um, and I knew it had to work as a transition between the sunsetty, uh, warm, like caramel colors of the previous page and the harsher, more blue and cool colors of the page that followed it. So I had to make sure that the, this page itself had that sort of transition, um, particularly as she changed scenes to the lower floor. Uh, I also could not follow my heart when it came to adding colors because despite the way that modern pages look where there's like pinks and greens and basically the full rainbow of colors are at my disposal um, back in the early chapters I limited myself primarily to this like pumpkin-y warm terracotta-y orange color uh, that you see in her cheeks and uh, in her eyes and the slate color of her hair um, so I basically just picked darker and lighter tones out of those two colors and made that my primary color palette with a more reddish shading tone so I stuck with that um, but I just tried to balance the colors a little better <laughs> Honestly, this page reminded me of something really important, and that is the idea that you need to wait until you're ready to make your comic or your project. I talk about this all the time, but really, if you have something you're passionate about and that you really want to make, you should start making it now. Because, I mean, if you really, really hate a page down the line, you can actually fix it. You can change it. Even though, like I said, I don't necessarily recommend doing that because you can get really trapped in that loop of fixing things. Um, you know, just getting it started is already such an important step. It's the most important step. Like you can't take any other steps if you're too scared to start. So um, I really encourage you guys. I mean, I was making this comic when I really didn't have enough time to make it and I didn't have enough skill to draw all the things that I wanted to draw. But just by starting it, it raised my level as an artist through all the practice and through the motivation of knowing that my comic would be better if I, you know, learned how to draw this or that. Um, so like, please Please give your, your dream project a chance and really try to make it because you never know what kind of opportunities it's going to open up for you and like people might like it. Like I remember before Unfamiliar came out, I was really worried that nobody would read it and nobody would like it and now it has 20 million views on um, Tapas, it has uh, I don't know how many on Webtoon um, and you know a lot of people read it and resonate with it and that's like the most wonderful thing I think for any artist so um, please give your projects a chance if you have anything you're really passionate about don't be afraid of being bad because I mean I was bad and I still am bad in some ways but as long as I don't let it stop me from making the things I want to make and I keep trying my best to improve there's really no reason to worry or feel bad about any of this so I hope you guys take that attitude on as well 
yeah, sorry this turned into kind of a pep talk at the end. Thank you so much for watching me uh, rip on my old art, try to redraw it, and talk about my comic like a nerd for <laughs> 10 minutes. I appreciate you guys, um, and I will see you in the next one. Thank you to all of my patrons, including Razor57, Zephyr Art Place, Aubrey Schmidt, Lulu Luna, Rusu, Lily Allaire, Hazel Tiffia, Elizabeth Ward, The Expressive Poker Face, Small Ghost, Morrissey Axolotl, Big McLarge Huge, <laughs> Emily Leviers, Christopher Sparky Play, Subaki, Juliana Davis, Yume Lily, John Muscat, Snow White Schmeko, Hidden Squid, The Becky, Liliana Hammontree, Lauren, Fable Tell, Mia Lavali, Angel File, Q Musgrove, Trace, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Ruin Rain Crow, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Best Kaiju Lion, Tom David Johansson, Storm Scribbles, Yvonne Rodriguez, Ilaria Louie, Nora Cornelson, Joseph Copel, Clockwork Construct, Dr. Casket, Yuboya Steve, JJ Jade, and of course, Blah 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 Blah.